See it played, Death Ride Kursk, Leibstandarte, German operations phase. <clears throat> Alright, so these are some of the things I'm going to look at doing. Uh, first of all, the Germans are the attackers, so I'm going to look at giving them a, another company to bring up, um, probably continue around this flank. Um, I'm going to look at this uh, company of Panzer Grenadiers. I'm going to look at dismounting them and pushing them into the uh, town there and see what they can do. Uh, with this company, I'm thinking about, oh, one's still suppressed. Um, I'm going to double check. A suppressed unit probably cannot use overwatch movement. Um, huh, so, isn't that interesting, um, well, then I guess I'll just, I wanted to put somebody in Overwatch so I could move forward, or maybe I'll put, maybe I'll put this platoon in Overwatch and send the next company around to try to get adjacent here. I'll probably do that. Um... And, uh, the heavy weapons platoons, and I'm more confident about this now, the, the heavy weapons platoons that have an artillery symbol like this in the center, so just for explanation of NATO symbols. Okay, this is... Uh, well, this is four symbols on top of each other, which is which is the way NATO symbols are done. So, the X is infantry. The armor symbol superimposed means it that, that it's quote unquote armored infantry, no matter what particular name a nationality or force gives it. It's armored infantry. The uh, circle in the center, the cannonball in the center is artillery, and the heavy line on the left side there means heavy. So, put it all together, this is heavy armored infantry with some type of indirect fire or some type of, broadly speaking, artillery capability. That's what the NATO symbol means. In game terms, it is a heavy weapons um, unit, that's the asterisk, and it does, and because it has the artillery symbol, its primary weapon factor is also indirect fire capable. Okay, so I need to start getting them into the to the fight. So they so again this is the oops, one more time real quickly. This is cuz I need to know it anyways. So this is the 4th This is the 4th platoon from Alpha Company, which means that this heavy weapons platoon can support any Alpha Company 1st Battalion unit which Okay, so it's this is Bravo Company here. This is Alpha. And on the front line, suppressed is Delta Company. Oh, okay. So these are the three platoons of Alpha Company. Okay. So actually, that heavy weapons platoon supports... You know, I need to remember that that really only factors in with assault uh, combat. Um... But I would still think that a soldier from another company could not call for fire to that unit. I wonder about that. Well, in any case, we'll start getting some indirect fire in here. Well, unfortunately, um, after these, these uh, Panzer Grenadiers unload, they cannot move. So, that is, so that's not going to work. I wanted to unload them and then move them in the, into the town. I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to transport them into the town survive defensive fire um, and then unload them. And when I was looking at that, I, uh, oh, <laughs> the, actually they can take <laughs> defensive fire and opportunity fire. Well, they're still going to do it, but looking at that, I remembered, this is something I got to remember. You know, this stack took suppression. When a unit takes suppression, these Panzer Grenadiers are automatically um, dismounted. 
which ironically helps me, but I mean, I wanted that anyways, but that's not the point. They, they do dismount and then they're suppressed to the, the same level that the transports were, were suppressed originally. Um, we only have Soviet tanks, tank companies on the board, so I don't have to remember that for the Soviets yet until we pull some, huh, yeah, mounted Soviet units. I'm not sure what mounted Soviet units they have in this game. Huh. Well, we'll see. Um, so, I'm going to do the movement, um, a bunch of defensive fire and opportunity fire, and see what happens with all that. So, just looking at the opportunity fire. So, when the German Panzer Grenadiers moved into the town, by the way, the German player, of course, has the option to move in any way he or she wants to. One unit at a time, one first, then two, or any combination. And it's interesting to explore the different options. If it makes any difference, I don't know for sure. But um, I decided to move them all in to, um, to try that. Um, so they move. It's Soviet opportunity fire. One unit stack can execute uh, opportunity fire against the German mover. These units are not eligible for opportunity fire because they're adjacent. This unit is not eligible because it's suppressed. This stack that's in reserve, um, setting aside the issue of it being in reserve, I believe, not positive, but I believe that it is in a line of sight um, blind hex, blind spot, blind hex. Um, so this unit could conduct opportunity fire or this stack could conduct opportunity fire. I chose to use this stack here. Um, what happened is I first wanted to take both companies together so the whole stack conduct opportunity fire against. I first looked at the possibility of going against the whole stack and it wasn't even possible to get a result. Then it was two, then I decided to opportunity fire against two of the moving units in the stack. Um, odds were very low. So finally I decided to just go against one of them. Um, they rolled very well, nine, but it's minus, I think it's minus six. So it's minus, so this is how we get minus six. It is, um, um, so the fire is lower, one level lower. That's minus one. Um, the target is in a town, that's minus two. And it's, and it's opportunity to fire, which is minus three. That's how we get six. So uh, nine, very good roll, minus six is three on the 4.5 column is an S2. So one, the top unit is suppressed to level two, and now I remember that they dismount because they are suppressed. Um, oh, that's why this is gonna matter in what order we do it. Okay. As a matter of fact, I'll just leave them out because we're we have a lot more to go with the de with the defensive fire. So I'll leave those out, but then. The Soviet stack is marked op fire complete. Um, okay, now we go to defensive fire. And I believe that they're all eligible because they moved adjacent, including the suppressed unit. So um, now I don't think they can combine, but that's interesting. I think this unit has to do its defensive fire, and then this stack can do its defensive fire. Hmm. Okay, I took a chance, but it uh, paid off. So with the uh, German movers, the half tracks in the town, this is barely had a chance to get anything and didn't get anything, but now I see those are some Weak platoon, a weak uh, tanks, weak tank platoon or company, weak tank company. Um, 
Then I went to this stack, and even with the 10% suppression, um, took a chance to go after the whole, uh, or not the whole, the the two Panzer Grenadier platoons that hadn't been suppressed yet. And I rolled well with an 8. Minus 4 is the net DRM. So that still was an S1. So not bad. Not, not too bad. But what was obvious in this um, little, this little exercise was that um, uh, defensive fire is not always... Um, uh, well, they're already dismounted now. <laughs> um, defensive fire is not always uh, murderous. Um, so like that weak tank platoon, which makes sense. They're, they're firing up elevation into the town, moving half tracks. Um, yeah. So we'll finish off the rest of the German operations here. Okay, what happened here is that uh, the next platoon I brought on, Charlie... I mean, company. The next company, Charlie Company, I brought into the fight here. They moved up here. And as they're moving up here, there is no opportunity to fire against them because you're passing through, because Soviet line of sight passes through these other priority targets. Um, or I should say, I'm not sure if that's the right way to put it, but line of sight is blocked by these enemy units. Once it got here... Um, there was clear line of sight from from this uh, uh, company. They fired, rolled very low, so no opportunity to fire. And then the Germans moved here. They moved adjacent to this suppressed Soviet company so that this Soviet company conducted defensive fire and rolled very well, rolled a nine. Unfortunately, because of the the um, well, the odds involved, because of the odds involved, um, primarily the minus three for defensive fire. Um, they only fired at one um, at one platoon, but they still got an S two result, and so first that platoon automatically dismounts and is suppressed to level two, like that, and then uh, and then uh, the remaining two platoons. I wanted to have dismount and they can fire now after dismounting at half strength. So oh um huh. so no I guess I won't do it this time, but I wonder if this unit was suppressed with defensive fire now. Can it then do well, I guess it could not do fire after movement because this wasn't fire. Mm. Hmm, I wonder about that. I don't know about that. I wasn't going to do it anyway, so I won't. But the question is, I wonder if that unit that was suppressed by defensive fire can now join in this fire after movement. So the rules say that these units dismounted, they can conduct fire at half strength, um, plus a minus two, plus the minus two for firing after moving. Mm -hmm. But that's offset by the elite plus two for elite fire anyways. So actually that's null. So then we'll get plus two for adjacent. We'll get plus one for being higher elevation. Um, I guess I guess that's it. I guess that's plus uh, three. Plus two for adjacent, plus one for higher elevation. Okay. Okay, to, to finish this out, they just did not just did not get the roll. So, not not a bad try though. Not a bad try at all. Um, wow, that's really interesting. So, so I think that I think the kind of the spirit of the game is that when you're hard charging, fighting like this, you're kind of you're living with suppression. I guess is one way to put it. You're living with suppression. And you have to fight and operate through suppression to still win.